Hey guys, what's happening? Nathan here. I uh, wanted to talk lobster with you. So lobster season is just around the corner. Um, you're going to need a couple things in order to lobster dive. First is going to be your California fishing license. You're also going to need a lobster card um, that you will need to fill out before you get in the water. Your lobster gauge, three and a quarter inches. Um, you have to physically have this on your body the entire time you're diving. You need to measure your lobsters as soon as you catch them. You can't just put them in your bag, come back to land, and then measure your lobster. So you're going to need a gauge and you're going to need something to put the lobsters in once you get them. You're also going to freeze if you don't have a wetsuit, but I think that just kind of goes without saying you're going to need a proper wetsuit and whatnot to make sure you're warm enough so you can stay in the water. How you go about using your equipment and catching your lobster is very personal, and there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing that. In general, the most common setup you're going to find, you're going to have a lobster bag, you're going to connect that to your weight belt, uh, you'll also have your gauge that people like to connect with a sometimes retractable leash. So that way as soon as you catch, you can grab it off your belt, measure, and then let go and it automatically retracts back to your belt. And the last thing is you'll need some sort of light. A lot of times we go out at night and so you need to be able to see what you're doing. So a lobster light, waterproof light is going to be very important. Uh, typically people have a wrist strap that goes around their wrists, they'll hold their light, they go, they catch their bugs and so forth. That's going to be the most common setup that people use to lobster dive. But I want to show you a different way that I like a lot more for the fact that um, I feel like it's a lot more safe. And in the end, I think you get a bit of an advantage um, when you kind of set things up this way. So first off, main big difference I'm going to have is a float and a float line. One of the reasons I like this a lot is that there's always something on the surface to show um, other divers or boats or any other thing that might need to be able to see me that I am there. Uh, sometimes when your buddy dives under the water, you have no clue where they are until they kind of come back up. And at nighttime, it can be tough to see them. So a float, especially if you add like a glow stick or something on top of that, is always gonna allow your buddies to be able to find you when they need you. And again, for any kind of boat traffic, hoop netting and whatnot, people are gonna see these things and they'll know that something is down there. In addition to making you more seen, a float allows you the ability to get your lobster bag off of your waist. So I can actually clip this lobster bag directly to my float. It floats at the surface, so whenever I catch something, I put it in there and it's not attached to me. I am a big proponent for not wearing anything on my body that I don't need to while diving. Um, if you've been lobster diving before, I know that at some point your lobster bag has grabbed on a rock at the bottom and caught and you'll have to actually with your hands kind of unstick it and get back up to the surface. So as much as I can, I like to try to keep everything off of my body that I don't need to. Um, and so that's one of the big things about the float line. The last way that I recommend you run your float line is on one end, it's going to go to your float on the surface. On the other end that comes down, one option is you could clip it directly to your belt. Um, what I prefer to do is actually, I'm going to connect my dive light to this, and I'm also going to connect like a heavier, maybe four pound weight, right? So my waiting for lobster diving is going to be normal waiting for anything. I'd like to be neutral at 30 feet, proper safe waiting for free diving. But when I carry a weight in my hand, it's going to make me a little bit more negative. It's going to make me a little bit easier to get down. It's going to make me stay on the bottom easier, and, but it's not attached to me, right? All I have to do is let go and then it's gone. It provides a little bit of additional help in keeping you on the bottom and not having to kick down. Most of the time when we're lobster diving, we're not diving deeper than 30 feet. It's pretty shallow diving. So most of the time you're gonna be positively buoyant. And if that's the case, you're gonna be kicking the whole time you're under the water, right? So this is a safe way to add a little bit of extra weight to you without actually having to put it on your belt and actually be an overweight diver. The other nice benefit that this has is that you can mark spots with it. So there's a lot of times when you're down, you see a good honey hole, but if you're at the end of the breath, you have to go back up, catch your breath, make another dive, but you can't find the spot again because sometimes visibility is bad and currents pulling and it's hard to find these spots. So this allows you to, if you find a good spot, drop that weight, mark that spot, and you can come back and continually find that. When it comes to lights, there's a lot of different ways you can go about your lighting. Most typically is people kind of have like a gun style setup with the light on the hand, uh, 
but you'll notice sometimes on big bugs, you'll need two hands to grab them. So sometimes you actually have to let go of the light, at which point you're no longer seeing what you're lighting up and you're kind of grabbing a bug in the dark, which is not ideal. So what I always recommend is this wrist strap. So here we have the light like this. So this is nice because if I need to actually use this hand and grab something, I'm not totally losing the light itself one hand light and then actually have another light on the face mask. So with this little add-on, this actually clips directly to your mask and then clips your light into this. So you can actually have hands-free mask mounted light. Um, that way if you drop, you still have a light that's always pointing to where you're looking. You're always gonna be able to light something up. You're never gonna be grabbing a bug in the dark. Two-phase lighting system, one on the hand, one on the mask, goes a long way. I like to use it. Give it a shot, see if it works for you.